Marty, Matt, and Kevin begin to construct the hydro wheel. Good man. Yeah. Go. I like it. I like it. I've been sitting here thinking about this micro hydro system for years, and uh, it sort of embarrasses me that I haven't tried a whack at this myself. Club! Kevin is a very smart man. He makes money from his patents, IQ off the charts. But Kevin's a dreamer. I'm a doer. That may be the perfect recipe for hydropower. All right, buddy, the last one. A year ago, Marty built a hydro wheel for the Rutherford homestead in Tennessee. But this one could be twice as challenging. To avoid legal issues with the Alaska Department of Natural Resources, done. We need to come up with a water wheel that is portable. It goes in, and it can come out and float on its own. It is not attached to the bank with concrete, wood, beams, or anything. It's completely independent. What do you think? I love them. Marty's hack? Using two external fuel tanks he bought from a local airplane enthusiast. It'll definitely hold the wheel. Everything's really going to come down to this gearbox. Is it going to work or not? The gearbox is a key component to generating power. The force of the river water will push the paddles, rotating the shaft and gearbox at the center of the wheel. The gearbox will multiply one rotation of the wheel into 24 rotations of the generator that creates electricity. Easy, easy, gentle. Gentle. So I've spent the last two days trying to find parts for a homemade water wheel, leaving me one day to finish this thing. Let her in. Ah! Why? I I'm good. You, <laughs> no, are you missing I, a finger? No, I don't joke when, the, when my <laughs> finger gets pinched, but thanks for playing. In Alaska, the Rainies have just two days to save the Tubbs family from a deadly power system. OK, moment of truth. By switching their cabin over to hydroelectric. But if the hydro wheel fails to launch in the little Susitna River and generate power, the tubs will be forced to resort to their dangerous system of jerry-rigged generators. Don't get near the wheel! It's too swift! Whoa! Oh. Get away, then! It's too get swift! Back, get back to safety! We got to get to those rapids! Oh! Holy crap. The hydro wheel is in the Little Sioux Sitna River. It's passed its first two tests. It floats. The pontoons actually work. And secondly, the cantilevered log is holding it in the most powerful section of the river. That's pretty powerful right there. OK. Ready here, rock and roll. Here we go. Plug it in. All the wires are on. Let's find some power. Kevin's inside checking to see how much power is coming from our hydro wheel to the inverter. And we need seven amps to be able to charge those batteries and make that thing a sustainable power source. So that's what we're looking for. Here we go. All right, we are plugged in, and our wheel is going pretty slow. We're at 3.5 amps, and we need to get to seven. Hey, Dad. It's a gearing issue. Let's just call it. It's not working. That thing is dead. There's a dark cloud over this homestead. And that is a water wheel. A lot of time was spent on it to make it work, and it doesn't work. Clock's ticking. I have less than 24 hours. Got to tear it apart. I'm in a bind. Stay tuned. At the crack of dawn. Push it out. Do not get in front of it. The Rainies race to complete the final modifications on the hydro wheel in hopes of successfully generating at least seven amps of power. Abandon all of that gearing and put what they call a link belt, an adjustable belt, and go entirely around these wooden paddles. Everything that I've tried thus far has failed, but there's two things I haven't tried. Extend the paddles 
to catch more water and create more power. And more importantly, actually putting a belt directly on the wheel, directly to the generator. A direct drive system takes energy from the wheel and immediately turns it into electricity. The larger wheel could allow it to generate more power than the gearbox, but only if it works. There are no more ideas after this. You gotta know this right now. All the chips on red, spin the wheel. I'll give you a ball, whatever you need. All of this has been abandoned. You're going in, just find out if we got seven amps. Let's find out. I'll be on the walkie. All right. Now you're cooking. 0 0.52, 3.5, 3.94. What's he saying? 4.95, 6.95. 6.7. Yes! 7.8. No! Eight. Seven. No! We got 12. 12! No! Really? <laughs> Are you being serious? Yes. Don't mess with me. What, what is it? We got 13, 14, 15. Those paddles combined with this new belt, that's all you needed. 14, 15, 16. We figured it out. we can generate enough power to power the house. We have a hydro wheel in the water right now that's actually producing power, and that just blows my mind. You did it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> just eight days ago, Kevin was forced to use a dangerous rat's nest of wires and batteries to generate power. Now, Kevin has a functioning hydroelectric system on the Little Susitna River, sending all the power he needs safely through a new wiring system to his log cabin for just $1,300. I can't tell you how thankful I've been that they went all out here. It's like a dream come true. Thank you so much. Oh, good. I think that he can probably sleep a little more soundly knowing that his electrical system is a lot more safe and the area around his home is a lot more safe. I mean, what more could we ask for? Thanks again. 